Oh, let's start with Nerd's Ratchet Preview from Netflix. I saw it. I am very intrigued. I mean, I love Sarah Paulson, and it looks really good. It's by Ryan Murphy, right? Mm hmm It looks very American Horror Story-esque. Mm hmm I was... I am. I am disappointed. By the trailer? I'm disappointed by the trailer, by the concept, by the artistry, by all of it. I just feel like I'm eating a dog's vomit. I've already done this. We already had American Horror Story Asylum. Now you're going to be the nun and the nun is gonna be one of the patients. Like, I don't need to see it in reverse. I feel like I need Ryan Murphy to get out of the 1950s, 1960s. Like, I I'm tired of old Hollywood glamor from him. I'm good, I'm good. I am just like, I watched Hollywood. I just feel like it's, it's too, like I watched fucking Feud. It's getting too regurgitated. What? You cursed. Oh, sorry, wait, what did I say? You said fucking. Oh, I'm tired of the, like, I'm tired of the 1950s. I'm tired of it. Like, okay, you can do that. Give us some futurism. Give us something uh -huh. different. Like, I am bored. Too many of your, like, it's just too much take back. I'm tired. I'm tired See, of I'm, I'm ashamed to say, but I've never seen Asylum. So I guess I don't have that sentiment. <laughs> it's too early to call me tomorrow. Asylum was... I don't know if you'll like it, but I feel like you owe it to yourself to watch it. I feel like- Well, I heard the first of... two I was supposed to watch. Huh? I heard you're supposed to watch the first two. I haven't seen the first two. I started you, with Cup. Oh, Murder House is amazing. And it is the birth of a concept. And Asylum was one of the most, for me, introspective television series I've ever seen. Like, it made me think. The concepts were new and beautiful. It was executed flawlessly. Was it scary? Terrifying. In a whole new way. Huh. It took, because the thing is, it wasn't about so much of the jump scares. It was about the darkness within. And loneliness and isolation and... Normally things that are explored in, in like Korean horror, not less, not so much American horror. So I really uh -huh. was like, oh, this is a new concept for us. I was thoroughly impressed. <laughs> but it's like, okay, you can't keep doing it. You can't. Right. So um, some good news. Um, Kiki Palmer is set to host the VMAs. I, I'm here for it. It's perfect. It gets the Black audience to care. Yeah, because I, I was not going to tune in. But for Kiki... Yeah, I think if it was going to be like a, um, I don't know, some random white Hollywood woman, I think no oh, one would have watched. Who was the one who hosted it last year? Like that, like, Jersey guy that everybody was like, who is this? You came over. Was that him? Together. It, that was a long time ago, it feel like. That was, huh. <laughs> That's what happens with the Roan. Wow. That was last August. I don't know what. You used to be able to like, come over to my apartment. Remember that? We watched it together. Oh we my God. I forgot all about that. We did that. a whole ass review. Ooh, the fashions were terrible. Yes, they were. Meg um, Thee Stallion was not Meg Thee Stallion, but she was on her way. Oh, yeah. Okay. Also, congratulations to Kiki Palmer for booking the Proud Family, the new one, on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. She's going to be a character on there. Kiki keeps a check. Keeps a check. I, I love her. I love to see it. Keeps a check, Palmer. Yes. Kiki keeps a check, Palmer. Yes. <laughs> Oh, are you watching P-Valley? 
I am not. Everyone is telling me to do it. My friend just gave me a star's password. I wasn't have supposed a star's to. password. Damn. Oh. Actually, you do too because I put it on Hulu and we share Hulu, right? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Oh. I should have said that to you. I thought it should have popped up. We share Hulu, y'all, and Disney Plus because we're friends who look out for each other. So you can access stars through Hulu. Yeah, I got Hulu through stars. I mean, I got stars through Hulu. I'm going to check out the first episode, but I hear it's so good. What can be so dynamic and different about a story that takes place in a strip club? It might be something new. So I'm going to check out the first episode and see if I'm hooked. I did see um, a very funny show everyone's been telling me to check out, uh, Shit's Creek. I really enjoy that. It's Am like, I not Moira Rose? Oh, my God, you are. Oh, my God. <laughs> That is, you, so you're familiar, you've seen all of it. Uh, I am not. Here, funny story. Um, here's how to lose a guy in eight months. He loved that show. I never made time to watch it. And now I'm single. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and the thing is, I wish I had because I didn't, re well, the thing is, I hate seeing rich people be poor. I hate it, I just, it disgusts me because I wanna be rich so bad. I never wanna see rich people be poor, except for, you know, the people that are in office right now. Now they, they can be in abject poverty. But other than that, I'm like, mm -mm. especially if I like them, I'm like, but you're poor and that's terrible. I don't wanna be poor. I was poor for many years, I'm tired of it. Yes, I have a soft spot uh, for, um, uh, what's her name, Catherine O'Hara. Because I love Beetlejuice as a kid. I know she was in a lot of other movies, but Beetlejuice was one of my favorite movies. She, and she was so good. She rocked that role. That role made her an icon. And I would say, am I not her too? Am I not <laughs> the wife from Beetlejuice? Like, I, like the crazy artist that's, you know, married to the normal guy. Like, that's, that's who I am. It's sad, but it's true. And speaking of wealthy white women, um, there's been a lot of celebrities uh, coming out in Ellen's defense, like Kevin Hart, Tyrese. Tyrese had two pages dedicated to uh, how much he thought how great Ellen was. Um, Jay Leno, um, Jerry O'Connell, Katy Perry. Hey, Jerry O'Connell, like, we were liking you, but you're getting a little too close to conservative for me, sir. You were on Watch What Happens Live with Meghan McCain and S.E. Cup. I mean, go on and pull your hood out. Yeah, I, it was hard to watch. It was hard for me to get through because Andy was really trying to make them likable. And, and that's, like, Andy, like, dude, you don't need to have them on your show. You don't. I just think it's crazy that these celebrities are coming out in Ellen's defense when, like, you don't work for Ellen. It's a completely different experience. Like, to be in a racist or toxic, like, environment, to work in that environment, like, it's different. It's just crazy to me that, like, all these people are coming to her defense. I mean, I'm sure she's a nice lady. It's just... It's Am I a nice lady? Are you a nice lady? Am I a nice lady? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I know comedians and I believe every word. We are tyrants. Her, her black DJ that she's had for years came out and said that he hasn't, you know, experienced Ellen's rap, but he felt the toxicity on the show. So that's all I needed to hear. Lord, and you are not gonna believe this. The woman who attempted to sue a New Jersey country club because her $30,000 Hermes bag got wine spilled on it is now asking a judge to revive her case after it was tossed last month, according to a report. 
Marianna Bader sued the Alpine Country Club in October, claiming that a server stained her pricey pink purse while she was dining at the posh Deermarist establishment in September of 2017. But on the 24th of July, her suit was dismissed by a Bergen County Superior Court judge after a lawyer for the club claimed she and her husband did not show up for depositions to cite despite subpoenas and hadn't turned over documents that the club was seeking. Basically, the club is like, girl, that's a fake purse and we ain't paying for it. <laughs> we gonna need to see the receipts. We want the receipts. We need a certificate of authenticity to prove this truly is a $30,000 pink Hermes suede bag. And the waiting list for one of those is about a year and a half. It's still an accident too. I mean, that. To go to court for all that? 30, oh. if, now, if the bag was real and you spilled wine on my $30,000 bag, I'm taking that $30,000 out of your ass. I don't care if you got your kids working for me washing clothes. I'm going to get my 30 grand. <laughs> I waited that, two years, real... Wait, wait, wait. I waited two years for a bag for you to fuck it up? That's an ass whooping <laughs> off GP. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I get it. Just to go to court for that, like how this, would, for three years. How would you feel if someone spilled wine and broke your Nintendo, whatever it is? Um, I mean, it's it's three hundred dollars. Like if they did, they would easily replace it. But I'm guessing, you know. Given that bag is the price of a car, it just it's just different, you know? I mean, I take somebody to court over if they spilled something on my coat. They can get it dry clean. Like that's happened a lot. Like someone spilled wine on this man's like Armani suit. And basically he had to like get the, get it clean and the restaurant reimbursed him to get it like, you know, dry clean and shit like that. But what if it ruined the coat, like my red coat, if you spilled wine on it, it would be destroyed. It would simply, it, there's no dry cleaning that, it's destroyed. You've got to go to Macy's it, and get it. might replace it. You're going to have to replace it. And then what if it's something where it's like, oh, we don't have another one in that size. Then you're going to give me as much money as I want until I'm happy. <laughs> and if, here's the thing, like you have to pay for accidents, that's why there's car insurance. And child support. <laughs> but also, uh, I feel like if that bag really was $30,000, she would have beat whoever it was up on site. That just would have been an automatic ass whooping, and then the restaurant's going to pay for it. So um, I sent you something through Twitter. Oh, my God. The Real Housewives of New York reunion looks. And it's funny to see who had a mask on and who didn't. I feel like Leah looked the best. Um, For one thing, before we get into the looks, it's going to be the first reunion since this all happened to be done in person. So I'm glad that's happening. They're taking safe precautions to do so. Ramona was wearing a mask, though, in her picture. They just didn't have it in that one. Oh. I'm, I'm, curious, I'm curious if they're going to use the mask on set, because that would be very funny. I think I might prefer it to be that way. Um, I would not because then they're not really going to be able to read facial expressions. It'd be even more funnier reading your eyes, like the eye rolls and the like, I don't know. Like, let me see. Can we do facial expressions through masks? Oh, damn it. I don't have one. I can, okay, because I know you, I can imagine your face. And the eyes are definitely giving, but not everyone has eyebrows as expressive as yours. These are the Housewives of New York. It's frozen all up and through. You can move your eyebrows. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Anywho, um, I'm excited for it. Um, I like Luann's look the best. Leah's looks a little borderline tacky. 
a little bit. Like it's it's the fine line of tacky. But I love Leia though. Sonia Morgan's mask, I was like, yes. That that was the drama. She she brought that. Sonia Morgan's new body and her new face. She, I gotta say, you, you, she wants to get a new rich husband, and she's like, okay, I can't do that with this '84 Cadillac. Let me suit myself up to a 2002 Lincoln. She must have hit up Kylie Jenner or whoever does Chris Jenner's face. Mm -hmm. She got or um, Jane Fonda, whoever does her face too. I don't know. Jane Fonda had um, some real bad cat wrinkles for a minute. Like, she couldn't smile without it being like, ooh, oh, oh, what is that? When I think of cat wrinkles, I think of that naked cat. Who's naked cat? No, those naked cats with no skin. Oh, like on, oh, okay. But I, I thought you were thinking, I, like, I thought so too, but I was thinking like, who, which, who owns one? Mm-hmm. Because I know Dina owned one on Jersey. Jersey, yeah. But I don't Speaking know. Jersey, they got a new housewife, so it's going to be seven of them. That's sad. The that new housewife looks good too. And she has money. Uh, well, I guess that means hopefully we're getting rid of Teresa because I, I don't ever want to see her again. Well, they're focusing the next season on Teresa, unfortunately. They're doing the aftermath of um, her being separated from Joe. The aftermath, they've been separated because they committed fraud. They committed felonies and they went to jail. Jail. Well, I'm sorry. Prison. Right. But I mean, like, that it's official, you know, that they're... Oh, I was like, what is that? That was your leg. I was like, what is swimming towards you? <laughs> oh, my God, it's coming towards me. Oh, my God, it's on me. It's... Oh, wait, it's my leg. Yeah, it's, it's good. I, I, want this. I want her in the pool. I, this leg has been with me for 37 years. She ain't never done me wrong. It's a good leg. Uh I'm glad after 37 years, you still can get that leg up. I'm really <laughs> glad. <laughs> sure can. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexander Rogers. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure we're far 10 minutes in the video now. Mm -hmm. So speaking of naked cats, the WAP video. <sighs> okay. Like, I, I, I love the segue. I just thought it was clever. Um, Everyone's talking about it. Um, I was watching it at midnight, so it's Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion. Uh, Meg Thee Stallion is collecting features like Infinity Stones. Like, she has Nicki Minaj, she has Beyonce, she has Cardi. All that's left is Ariana Grande and, um, shit, Rihanna. Wait, I thought we were talking about people who did music. Well, a Rihanna feature is still How like can, you can't have a Rihanna feature when Rihanna ain't got an album. I'm just saying, like, if Rihanna puts out any type of music, people are gonna be on it. So I think she's, she's gonna not. like but she works for Rihanna. Who? Meg the Stallion. She's a uh, Fenty uh model. That's as close as a collab as they're gonna get. Rihanna ain't singing another note for the rest of her life. And then again, let's not you heard it here first. You heard it here first, y'all. I'm predicting that Rihanna and Meg Thee Stallion are going to collaborate at some point. I'm just saying, this is my prediction. I predicted what would happen with the virus, and I was right. So I think I'm going to use my Raven Simone skills and gaze into the future. And I predict that Rihanna will not sing another note. <laughs> Um, so, the video. Cardi always has a good visual. I gotta give her props on that. Like, she really does put effort into her music vid videos. She doesn't get a kiddie pool and start twerking in it like some other people. So... Wait, I thought Beyonce and Nicki Minaj did that in their video. 
And Nikki also did it in um, the, oh, fuck. Was it Hard White? I can't remember. Like that, hola, 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 hola. I can't remember oh, that. That, that, and then that. She, the thing is, so many of her songs come and go so quickly. It's like trying to name a fart. Um, shit, I can't remember the song. I'm, I'm sure the, fan, the Nikki fans are in our comments, and they will let us know. But on to more important things. Um, I like the video a lot. I could have did without the Kylie Jenner cameo. Me too. It was like, we were enjoying the video, and it was like, uh, why See, are Kylie you? Kylie Jenner, it, she is, she is whole why is you here personified. That's what I think. Um, I think it was unnecessary. It was also weird being that what all happened to Meg too. To have, I'm sure it was done before all that. Yeah, those, but, lyrics, those lyrics were like, ooh, um, uh, yeah. could we not edit? So I'm just, reviewing, I'm just reviewing the video now, y'all. I'm gonna get to the song in a second. But yeah, like, um, I, I didn't know Meg could dance like that. They were like giving you choreo. The video looked expensive. Cardi gave some really good looks. I appreciated it. Um, now the song, I think it was a meh. But then when I listened to the explicit version, I'm like, okay, it, it's kind of growing on me. It, it's in a very explicit song. Um, wet ass pussy. I mean. Did you think it, that's what it stood for when you saw the um, the WAP acronym? Uh, you see, I I was introduced to it all as all at once because I didn't know it was coming out. I woke up this morning, at, well, this afternoon, and I saw like all the think pieces. Like I was introduced to it through a think piece, and oh, I okay. like honestly, I saw the conversation they were having on Apple Music about you know being female rappers and all of that before i saw the song in the video so i knew what it was going into it okay but who uh, wants a dry ass pussy so you know who wants a small I penis i don't want any pussy how about that <laughs> i mean if i had to have one i'd prefer it to be moist <laughs> ah! Um, I, that lady, if I you want a pussy, I prefer it to be moist. I want that on the t-shirt. <laughs> I want it on the t-shirt. If I had to have pussy, I want it to be moist. Anywho, like the song is all right. It's not like you know something I could see myself hearing later down the line. It might go number one. It's number one on iTunes right now, but we'll see because you know people are just excited about the collaboration. Um, so Hasbro recalls troll dolls that features a button between its legs that makes the doll giggle. Wait, like what? Hasbro had to recall a bunch of troll dolls because there's a button between the doll's legs that makes it like giggle when you touch it. Yes. It is insane. What? So listen, so the Troll World Tour Giggle and Sing Poppy doll, which has now been recalled, has a button on its stomach that when it's pressed, it says, can I have a hug? And then other sweet phrases. What isn't advertised anywhere on the box in the media is that there is another button on the bottom of the doll between his legs under the skirt. When it's pressed, the doll makes a wee and a ooh, a ooh sound. A spokesperson for the company issued a statement saying that the button was intended to be triggered when the toy was placed in the seated position. But the company now recognizes that it could be perceived as inappropriate. <laughs> yes, like, this story is on <clears throat> this story is on neighborhood talk. This it was like a white mom that recorded it. 
and she pressed the button. You need to look at it because I'm just like, oh my God. I don't. How any- I, I don't need to look at it. I don't. I think nobody should look at it. That you're going to get to go to jail if you look at it. No. Oh my God. Like, what the, what the fuck? Yeah, no one saw that in marketing. Like, but the button is like, it's supposed to no. make that sound when you sit it down. But when you press that button, like, it goes, hoo, hoo, he, or like, does a woo. Like, it's crazy. And the sad thing, it's going to teach kids it's that easy, and it ain't. You got to work for the hee-hee and the woo. Yes. Oh, my God. (laughs) Next topic. Another WTF story. A woman from McDonald's punched a teenager because she forgot to put the ketchup in her bag. I'm just like, really? You don't have ketchup at home? It's, I'm just like, I get it. Cause one time, like, you know, someone forgot to put my barbecue sauce with my nuggets. They put that nasty ass hot mustard when they had hot mustard back in the day. I was so angry. I threw it against my windshield. <laughs> but I did not go back and punch somebody, assault someone. It's just the rage issue. Like, I just don't get that. You know, a part of me, feels like it's an overreaction and part of me is like you know what y'all need to start taking your jobs a little more seriously and stop being afraid to put some ketchup packets in that bag i I don't know i'm a dual mind i'm like i don't think teenagers should be punched but if it was a grown person you know and if it was a woman on woman it was a woman hitting a teenage girl you know what that's a fair fight that's a fair fight hit her hit her so I also want to tell you a story. I already put it in my um, video, but um, I was at Popeye's yesterday, and I really wanted to, like, because I, I was making jambalaya, and I always love to have Popeye's chicken with my jambalaya that I make. So I was just like, oh, God, I don't feel like walking to Frederick Douglass. Like, I wanted to, like, you know, just, you know, Uber Eats. Eight chicken strips was $24. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just walk my ass. 10 minutes to the Popeyes. I didn't know so, this was, I didn't know this was today's episode of why I don't live in New York anymore. I didn't know, but here we are. Well, no, this is just Uber Eats, period. Like, Uber Eats charges you a lot for all those taxes and shit. So anyway, I get to the Popeyes. They slow as fuck. Um, it's one, one line. You, you've, been to that, you've been to the Popeyes before, right? So you know how there's two windows and usually two lines. Well, because of, you know, the Rona, like it's one line and you go to the window when it's ready. So I was waiting for maybe like- Oh wait, hold on, hold on. Is it not a gag that they had the plexiglass already? They were Rona prepped. (laughs) They didn't have to change shit. It's like going to a bank. It really is. I'd like to withdraw three pieces of nuggets. So, yeah, um, I'm waiting patiently, even though, like, I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, the two women in front of me, these two women got, like, you know, a huge order that was almost $100. The other chick, they fucked up her order. So then in comes this ratchet woman. Like, I'm waiting patiently in line. She's just looking at me. She's just like, there's two lines. Which line is you in? I'm like, there's only one line. Uh, like, everyone has been waiting patiently. I have two other people behind me. So she just walks up in front of me and just like, well, I came in last night with my boyfriend and we, like, got up to the window. I'm just like, you know what? I'm not about to fight over Popeye's chicken. I have too much to lose, you know? But I wanted to be like, I wanted to move my mask and be like, ma'am, it's chicken. <laughs> like, like I, I, was, I was this close, but the lady came to my defense and she said, <laughs> the lady came to my defense and she said, ma'am, there's one line. And she started cursing at her. I'm just like, okay. But she said she wasn't going to serve her. So she stayed right there, but her friend, she left out and her friend stood her in her place and I got to go up next. But I'm just saying, people just come in 
with this irrational attitude because it was quiet. I was waiting my turn. I was annoyed, but... Ma'am, it's chicken. I, I was this close to saying it, but the woman, it, like, interrupted. Anywho, that's my Popeye story, y'all. I'm sorry to bore y'all with that. But that it's was so fascinating. Cool. That, was, that was great. That was it's, a great story. It's so easy to get into a confrontation in New York, and you really have to pick your battle. I tell that to my friends, but my friends are more short, more short patients than I am. So it just really depends on who you try in New York. So the gyms are still closed in New York, and I've been trying to find some type of home workout to do and something that's just not that stressful. And Beachbody wants to take all the anxiety out of the workout and let me enjoy a fun, simple, and affordable way to get my body moving and yours too. You don't have to spend hours searching for a program that is right for you. Beachbody offers thousands of workouts so you can select the type of program that will get you motivated and start on your fitness journey. You get access to professional training from the comfort of your home with Beachbody On Demand. So my experience with Beachbody has been pretty seamless. They have a history of success. This is the company that's behind P90X Insanity and 21 Day Fix. They have the best trainers you get motivated by, celebrity super trainers like Tony Horton, Joel Freeman, and Autumn Calabrese. Now, you can work out on your own schedule. Like, there's some workouts that are just short as 10 minutes that don't require extra equipment. You can access it anywhere and anytime. You can view it on your computer, web-enabled TV, tablet, smartphone, Roku, Apple TV, everything. Now, I'm telling you, it's the best deal in fitness, and listeners of Pop Rose can try it absolutely free. I know I've used the 20-Minute Transformation by Sean T., which is a six-week program, six days a week, 20 minutes each, and look at how much weight I've lost. I've gone down two whole cup sizes. <laughs> I see the difference. And you should try Beach Body On Demand because well, what else do we have to do right now but focus on our health? Our health. To get a special free trial membership, text ROAST to 303030. You'll get full access to the platform and all the workouts, nutrition information, and support absolutely free. Just text ROAST to 303030. Rihanna came out with her Fenty skincare line, and I've been hearing that a lot of people have been breaking out by it, but some people are saying, oh, this shit is having me break out. I'm not going to use this anymore. And some people are saying, okay, when you change your skin regime, you're supposed to break out. People online on Twitter are messy as fuck. And, you know, they're trying to slam, like, Rihanna's skincare. They're saying, basically, oh, it's purposely breaking you out so you can use her fence foundation. That, that, that is so not true. Who would want to cover, like, if you're breaking out, you're not going to cover it with concealer. Because one, you have nowhere to go. And two, that's only going to make the breakout worse. Like, you're just going to end up looking like Kenya Moore. That's what happens if you put on concealer over a breakout. Kenya Moore. Am I lying? She turned her pimples into peaks. All right. I mean, that's what happens if you put makeup on over skin that is breaking out. You don't do it. You just look gross. Just let it heal. <laughs> Ooh, let's have a personal note with Chris. So now that you are 35 and stunning, how do you feel? Uh, I feel great. Um, I'm glad I don't look 35. Um, you know, I, you know, I just wish I had this mindset maybe, um, a decade ago. <laughs> I'll give you that. Yeah, like, I just, I just know me, you know? Like, I'm unapologetically me. Like, I was trying to tell one of my friends, like, because he wants kids, and he's like, he's 36. And I'm just like, well, look at the realistic part of it. Like, yes, it looks good on paper. You want kids. Great. But do you have that, Seventy to ninety thousand dollars for for a kid, 
And he was like, oh, well, no, I, I want to get, you know, maybe I can get a friend and do surrogacy. And I'm just like, okay, you're asking your friend to carry a baby for you for nine months and just give it to you. On her like, insurance. Yeah, See, I'm, I'm like, sorry. Okay, babies ain't for broke sissies. Babies ain't for broke sissies. And babies cost $10,000 a year. Pampers alone. That's, that's 40% of it. Pampers. I mean, no, but, please, I'm gonna have to pay a nanny at least four grand a month to look after it. But yeah, I was just like, I'm happy you want a kid, but I'm just saying, just think about it realistically, because are you gonna pay for that for your friends and, you know, all those fees and stuff like that? Are you gonna pay for her prenatal vitamins and shit like that? And do you want her to have, like, seeing the kid's life? Do you want that connection, you know? Is it gonna be like a throuple? Like, that's the thing. Like, it gets complicated. This, well, is, this is hilarious. In positive news, um, Oprah is reportedly purchasing billboards demanding justice for Breonna Taylor all over Kentucky. That's what that is. It really is. I'm just like, I still like Oprah, and I think she's, you know, giving back as much as she can. So many people have some crazy shit to say, but what are you doing, you know? That's what I'm just saying to people that have such a problem with Oprah. What are you doing for your community? You know what? Because she is, she does do a lot of things for a lot of people. I never stop liking Oprah. I'll just call her on her shit, but I still fuck with her. So that Antebellum movie with Janelle Monae, um, it has a date and it's going to be a demand now. So it's not going to be coming out in theaters. It's just going to come out in September on, I'm guessing, a streaming platform. I really want to see the movie because I've been looking forward to seeing that one. I'm, I'm looking forward to it too. I think that's wonderful. I'm really pissed that A Quiet Place is like thinking that they're going to come out in movie theaters next year because the thing is, I'm not going to a movie theater until I'm 50. Oh, wow. Okay. How many, like you, like the thing is, the only reason I went to movies is because I would go to movies with you. Now my movie friend doesn't live here, so who am I going to the movies with? Oh, so while we're on the topic of movies, what do you think about Disney Plus? They're charging $30 for Mulan, like for new movies. Like, I, I get say, I would yeah. say, I would pay $30 for, you know, Jurassic Park 2 or whatever that is, like the new Jurassic movie. But uh, Jurassic World. there we go. Yeah, Jurassic World. Like I did, I, again, like whatever it is that they were shooting, I would pay $30 for that. I like, I was never that excited about a live action Mulan. I, I never wanted to see a live Mulan. Like I just, it seems too serious for Disney. Mm-hmm. And People love the animated one because it was funny, it was cute. You know, this one doesn't look like, it just looks serious, like a war movie. Yeah. My, my point was like, what do you think of them charging $30? And I think it's only to rent it temporarily. They're just trying to make their money back. Well, I heard that they're gonna be releasing it overseas in movie theaters where movie theaters are still open. It's like the movie industry was kind of caught with their pants down with this virus because it's like people aren't going back to theaters until they're 50. A lot of people just aren't going to go back. Like people are buying sound bars. People are buying nice TVs. They're like, I can wait until it comes on and I can watch it at home, pause the camera, pause the movie whenever I need to. I don't have to worry about anybody coughing like you just did, you know, because you do that in a theater. You didn't fucked up the whole movie. I can't focus on the plot because now I'm like, oh shit, the virus is in here. I got to get, get out of the pool. <laughs> well, hopefully. I got to leave. I got to leave like a man leaves Halle Berry. I got to be like, oh, time to go. Um, hopefully a vaccine will be here, like, soon, but, yeah, you're right. I mean, people are going to be scared to go to movie theaters, and this is going to be the new normal, like, paying for new releases to watch at home. I kind of like the idea, because I hate going to, like, crowded movie theaters anyway. Like, I would only go to a movie theater opening night if it was, like, a, a Marvel movie, or if it was a movie that I was looking forward to. 
Otherwise, I will go to a movie on a Tuesday morning where it's like me, one of 10 people. So it works out for me. We would always go to those early matinees to see movies so that way. I hate going to a crowded theater. I hate it. And when I went to see Black Panther, this will also be a lot easier. Like, I won't have to put fried chicken, collard greens, candied yams, mashed potatoes, and mac and cheese in my coat. I won't have to hide all that food so I can watch the movie as the ancestors intended. I could just have a soul food buffet and have my, you know, three people who I know how they quarantine over. I'm imagining you with a fur coat sneaking in fried chicken, collard greens, and macaroni and cheese in some aluminum foil, and then just enjoying it in the movie theater. <laughs> and I used some mason jars as well. That's what I brought in. I went to Sweet Mama's before I went to go see Black Panther, and that's what I brought in. I had some mason jars as well, and Tupperware, because you know that coat has a lot of pockets. Okay. I was like, I'm sorry, I'm going to see Black Panther. I'm having soul food. I had hot sauce in my bag swag. Now, like Terry Hilson. Yes. Uh, speaking of movies, are you familiar with that whole Twitter thing, like with Zola? It's, no, I, I wasn't familiar with it. Um. Now, I know you did watch the channel before you came on the show, so I was hoping you would have remembered my dramatic reading of all of the tweets of Zola's story. Oh, wow. I, I, that okay. was a success. I did a video reading all of the tweets of Zola's story. I had to take it down because, you know, YouTube. But, um, yeah. The teaser is really good. I, I'm, I'm not sure when it's going to come out. People Magazine did the girl dirty. Like, basically, they put in their headline, Elvis Presley's daughter, I forgot her name, but uh, whatever her name is, Riley stars in... Keo. Who? Riley Keo. All right. Riley Keo stars in Zola movie. Like, that's how they did it. They didn't even mention the black girl's name. So then A24 Production retweeted People Magazine and then did their article and scratched out like her name in red and put the main character. I was, I was wondering about that. I was like, wait, did they read, like, did they redo Zola as a white woman? Like, why are we talking about Elvis? Right, exactly. John David Washington used to hide his father Denzel Washington's identity to get his own acting jobs. Um. Why? I don't need these types of stories. Like, the thing is, if you're a talented actor, you're a talented actor. And also, uh, you were raised in the best neighborhoods in Brentwood. You had the finest acting coaches money could buy. Your father helped you get roles regardless. So there's no need to, to you know, try to separate yourself from the acting dynasty you clearly want to be a part of. And you're putting this out so that people will take you more seriously. Child, we gonna watch a movie when it comes out. I'm sorry your shit got delayed because of the vibe vibe, but you don't need to do this, babe. You don't. And white actors do it all the time. I mean, nepotism really? runs wild. Little Wayne's girlfriend, Denise, responds to criticism over their relationship. Honey, I don't know why you're responding to criticism, because by the time you finish typing, the shit's going to be over, because Lil Wayne can't keep a woman. Right. I, I don't know. Lil Wayne, I just, uh, no comment. I'm from New Orleans. I guess I'm supposed to like him. But, yeah, um, no comment. Janet Jackson. Goodbye. Good night. See you next week. <laughs> Child, I don't even want to hear it. No, I don't want to hear it. Nope. We're not doing it. Nope. Just like you. Nope, 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 nope. I don't care what it's about. I don't care what it's about. <laughs> What, what is it, Alex? What is it? <laughs> she said um, in a new post in a puffy jacket, is it wintertime yet?
And I know yeah. that just and that incensed you immediately. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking, of course, you would want it to be a season where you didn't have to sing outdoors. Listen to me sing, mumble. The Instagram chat, every time I go in, someone asks me, what do you think about Janet? It's just like, y'all are just trying to get me started. I think so. What is, what is my trigger? Like, my trigger celebrity that you, you, you just know not to be like, the fact that Beyonce steals and you won't confront that. No, I meant like, I say a celebrity that you know I'm going to say something terrible about. Or say hey, something- Ooh, Azalea Banks. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Whenever I bring up Azalea Banks, I'm like, oh, hold on. Let me get the edit button ready. <laughs> child, he is called Azalea Banks everything but a child of God. Well, Kaya. Azalea Banks, Taylor Swift, Kim Kardashian. Like that's those four. Those four. And I only have one. And Janet yeah. did something to me. Janet invited me somewhere and then basically stood me up. Like you ain't even met or gone to a concert of them heifers and you can't stand them. Janet pissed me off personally, tried to get me to dance for her for free and have drone footage of me popping my pussy. Uh-uh, you gonna pay me. To be fair, T.I. as well. Well, it's always fun to talk about someone so ignorant. He's very ignorant. And speaking of ignorant, Future teases a new track called Gucci Bucket Hat wearing a Goyard bucket hat. And fans are confused. They're like, wait, what overpriced item are we supposed to buy? Because if you're in a Goyard bucket hat, but it's Gucci, but I don't, yeah. My food has come from Raising Cane's. It's hot and it's fresh. So I am going to try the chicken fingers that Chris talked so much about. I got you know this is torture for me, right? Mm. This is a nice lunch. Yes. Okay. I would prefer a honey mustard, but I'm not mad at this. What it needs is Chick-fil-A sauce. There's nothing like cane sauce to me, nothing. I hear it's really simple to make too. It's just horseradish, seasoning, and mayo. And pepper. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's try some of the slaw. Ew. You don't like slaw? No one likes slaw. Everyone gets an extra toast. Since I've even like known canes to exist, no one eats the slaw. I like the slaw. Ugh. Well, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> I will see you sooner than Tristan Thompson's next affair. And I'll see you sooner than Chrissy's raising canes. <laughs> Woo! Bitch! <laughs> <laughs>